Hello everyone! Today we're going to be taking a trip to hell, or at least a transdimensional plane that sure looks a whole lot like hell. To learn about ghosts. We're gonna learn about ghosts that spit fireballs. Trust me, it'll make a whole lot more sense when we actually get into it. Or at least I hope it will, because at the moment I'm not even sure what I'm on about. Anyways, let's find out together as we take a look at the ghast from Minecraft. Ghasts are large flying or at least free floating entities that exist within the nether, which have several tendrils on their underside and will spit fireballs at anyone who approaches too closely or provokes them. As the name suggests, their stark white appearance resembles that of a ghost, as well as their overall body frame bearing similarities to the striders, which also frequent the nether. When slain, they will produce gunpowder associated with their fire spit, but also occasionally a strange trinket known as a gas tear. Able to be found in most places within the nether, bar the warped and crimson forests, ghasts will normally drift through the air passively, calling out across the nether with their airy cries, until they perceive a threat, at which point they will open their usually closed eyes and begin attacking a target with explosive fireballs, while remaining at a safe distance. While a seemingly mysterious creature, without much definitively known about it, the ghast does have several theories surrounding it, most of which hypothesize that they are the ghosts or tormented souls of creatures which have died in the overworld, destined to live in misery in the nether, as would be expected with a traditional hellish environment. Other theories, however, suggest that they are not actually the souls of beings which have died in the overworld, but rather fragments of a much larger soul extracted by a virtually extinct species native to the nether, dubbed the Weavers. It is considered that the nether itself is a gargantuan living entity, a sapient reality almost, and that the Weavers ripped away portions of its being to conduct experiments on, and they now still roam their host, unable to rejoin the whole. What's more is that subsequent expansions upon this idea can considers that the Weavers gave some of the ghasts a physical form of their own which now exists as the Striders, smaller two-legged creatures that wade through the nether's lava lakes, which could be used as mounts or beasts of burden. The commonalities between the two include their overall body plan and the fact that they appear to exist in perpetual misery, likely because they desire to become one with the nether above all else, but are unable to. A few questions that must be considered then is why do the ghasts have several tendrils where the Striders have a pair of legs? Why the Striders are resistant to lava when ghasts can be set on fire, and why are the ghasts so hostile when striders are tame? Several questions such as these can be explained simply through weaver engineering, where they would have forced passivity upon the ghasts when making them corporeal and giving them a form most fitting of the duties they were required to carry out. As for the striders' resistance to fire and lava, it makes sense that they would innately have this resistance if they were originally part of the nether itself, and that the ghasts' weakness may not be to fire, as they are after all able to spit out fireballs without an issue, but rather the risk of dispersion. It's its ethereal form able to be scattered by most things it comes upon, resulting in it being deeply cautious about anything it encounters. This may also explain the many tendrils on its underside, in that the ghast is meant to be a cohesive mass of sorts, but because of its non-corporeal nature, its form sags and drags beneath it to an extent, creating what appear to be the tendrils. Finally, there is the ghast tear which is occasionally dropped when a ghast dies. It is unknown if they all possess one of these, with there being a strong possibility that many are shattered when falling from the air, but it could be thought that rather than being a real tear, that they are in a way the ghast's heart, the last connection it has to the greater never. This could be supported by the fact that the end crystals utilise ghast tears and have themselves theorised to connect to the never for the purpose of siphoning its life force. This is however a different topic that has been covered in my artefacts lecture series. Ghasts are an unusual creature, which can at this point be fairly confidently said to be ghosts, or at least spectres in some way, shape or form. Ascertaining their exact nature, however, is still quite the challenge, and there is still a lot to be learnt about them. Despite being a threat when engaged, they're a relatively common sight within the nether, and are easy enough for a veteran traveller to avoid. Because of this, the ghasts have been granted an individual rating of trivial, and a collective rating of potent. So you go in thinking they're just your standard damn souls, sentenced to be tortured for eternity in Hellfire, only to find out that they may actually be fragments of the soul of Hades itself. It never ceases to amaze me around here, even if it does confuse the hell out of me. No pun intended. Please subscribe for more course content, and become a patron to support the lecture series, and suggest your own topics. Now try not to provoke any angry looking spirits, and please have a great day.